what's up my YouTube family, you know who's in the house, your man DJ Roxy from Roxy Entertainment coming to you with another video, I hope everybody's doing good, hope everybody's being safe out there, and I'm coming to you with another tutorial. Now this tutorial is going to be on the legendary Emu Emacs 1. Yes, this keyboard here, even if you have the rack version, um, I sold my rack version, but I, you know, I'm in love with the keyboard. The reason why I like the keyboard more than the rack version is because of the buttons are, you know, are bigger and easier to find. And for me, I, I like to have the keyboard version too, the Emacs, more than the rack. But nevertheless, um, this keyboard sounds fantastic. If you're familiar with the SP1200, um, the Emu uh, SP1200 sound, this sounds exactly like it and even better. This sounds like it and even better. And I can back that up by saying um, it has more sample time. Just let's get out of that out of the way. Now, what makes this even more fantastic than the SP1200 is that the sample rate, you can change the sample rate, it's not fit like on the SP1200, it's a fit sample rate of I think it's like 22 or something like that, kilohertz. On this you can go from 10 kilohertz up to 42 kilohertz. Um, so that, this is great and this is 12 bit uh, just like the SP1200. Um, and I'm not bashing the, F, the SP1200, I'm an SP1200 user, I have an SP1200. But I'm just showing you how fantastic and giving you information and how fantastic the, the Emu is compared to other machine. Um, what makes this machine bad, I'm going to let you know from now. And that's the, um, the, the sequencer part of it. Um, the sequencer sucks. Hands down, the worst sequencer on any keyboard sampler that i ever been on. Um, even the Insonic um, uh, EPS has a fantastic sequencer compared to this. Um, this sucks. Like I can't even sequence a beat on that. Let me know in your comments below if you have one of these and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but the beauty about it, you know, you have your MIDI in, your MIDI out on this keyboard. And in this video, I'm going to give you some information on how to MIDI um, and use a sequencer. Uh, I really recommend that you use an MPC to sequence on this. Whether you have the MPC 2000, any line of the MPC, you can use it just to sequence. So the sound is going to be coming from the Emacs, but the sequencer is going to be on your MPC, um, which is great. Um, highly recommend that you use all your outputs. On this uh, unit, you have two stereo outputs and then you have eight outputs. Now, you're going to be using your eight outputs um, and I'm going to show you how to use your 8 outputs and how to set up your, this keyboard with your MPC to sequence. Now, I'm doing this video because there's not much information on YouTube on this keyboard. Um, it's a lot of videos on the Emacs 1 and the Emacs 2, but it's just guys that are showing you the, the sound of the keyboard. But for us as sampler producers, you know, like, you know, we want to know how to use a keyboard at sampling. And there's no video out there. Um, trust me, I looked night and day, even before I had an Emacs um, to get some information and there was no information. I'm showing you how to, to MIDI your, your MPC with your Emacs. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna break the ice. I'm gonna show you how to MIDI your MPC with your Emacs. So stay tuned. Don't go nowhere, it's your man DJ Roxy. And before we continue with the video, if you haven't subscribed, it's a perfect time to hit that subscribe button for more interesting videos, more information on this channel. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing you want to do is set your MIDI output on your MPC. You're gonna go from MIDI out from the MPC to MIDI in on the Emacs. Once you do that, you go down into your MIDI output. So you're selecting each channel to what MIDI output. Some MPCs have four MIDI output, some have two outputs. Select which output you connected your cable to the Emacs. In my particular situation, I have my MIDI cable on A. MIDI output A. 
selecting my channel, channel one. We only gonna need to use channel one for the MIDI. All right, on the Emacs, the first thing you want to do is select sample. Then we're gonna go and select our VU mode and gain to make sure that we have the right gain. Now this is way too high. I'm gonna come down at least to eight. Check my sample. I can still go a little higher. 16 is fine. We press enter. All right, once we got the right gain, we want to go ahead and select mode two, which is going to take you to play sample. And this is where you're going to be placing the sample from your MPC pad. So if you hit pad one, If you hit pad one on your MPC, you're gonna go hit pad one and you're gonna hit pad one until you get C1 or C minor one, C minor one. And that's gonna be your pad Whatever sound you sample on that is going to be for pad one. Press enter. You can change your sample rate if you want to go into a low sample rate or a high sample rate. It all depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of sampling, I recommend that you go to a low sample rate because the, the emu um, is very limited when it comes to the memory. So you have to play around with the uh, sample rate. So we're going to go into 16. The length of the sample that we're trying to do is 18 seconds. You can always go down into how long you want it to sample. But it has a way where you can manually stop the machine from sampling, which is what we're going to do. Now, the threshold of when you want the sampler to stop, to start to sample when the sound inputs. So we're going to go ahead and set it just a little high. And we're going to go into mode 6, which is the mode that we're going to get into right now. Amp the sample. So once we play the sample, the keyboard will automatically start sampling. If we want to stop it, we press key 8 or number 8 and it automatically stops sampling. Alright, once we sample the sound, you can play the sound. It's a lot slower than the actual sample. But it's tricky when it comes to the Emacs and you have to press record and press play and press the sound and it's automatically going to give you the right tempo for the sample so if I go into pad 1 it plays the sample that we sample on the Emacs. All right, so we have the first sound into that preset zero zero. You don't need to create another preset. We're gonna be laying all our samples or our sound into one preset. So we're gonna go ahead and sample, hit the sample button, and we're gonna go ahead, we don't need to set the gain because it's already set from the sample that we sampled before play sample this is very crucial because if you don't change the pad on this then you're going to be overwriting the sample that we already sample so we're going to go ahead into an npc and sample pad 2 we already have a sample on pad 1 
we want to go ahead and sample on pad two. So if we're going to pad two and hit pad two, we're gonna be setting this. So C1 is pad two. If we want it pad three, it's automatically gonna go into F1. So we want pad two because that's a second sample. So we're gonna be sampling into pad two. We can change our sample rate. Uh, you don't need to worry about the sample length because you already know when to cut it off or manually. Um, you don't need to set the threshold again. We're going to six and play our next sample. We stop the sampling manually. And now we have two sample. So if we go to pad two, we have that sample that we sampled last and the first sample. And you can do this multiple times as long as your memory allow you to sample. You have 61 keys on the keyboard. You can sample 61 times on this keyboard once your memory allow you to do it. Like I said, the memory on the Emacs is very limited, but don't let that stop you from being creative. All right guys, so now I sample all the sound into my Emacs um, and using my MPC to sequence and to trigger the sound. Um, so I'm going to play some of the sound. Um, so we have a kick drum. We have a snare. Hi-hat. We have a sample. We have another sample sound. Another sample. Another sample. Now, when we put all that stuff together um, using the MPC to sequence, um, like I said, it's the same way you would sequence any beat on the MPC, but you have to remember to put it to MIDI output. You have to set your MIDI output on your MPC um, in order to get uh, the sound to trigger or the MPC to trigger your Emacs. All right, so let's go ahead and play the beat that I made.
Yo, so there you had it. Hope you guys grab some kind of information in this video on how to MIDI your Emacs 1 and your Emacs 2. It's the same process for both machine or whether you're using the rack version, it's the same process. Um, like I said, I rather use the keyboard. Um, it's, the buttons are bigger and um, everything just seems a little quicker for me. Uh, that's my personal opinion. For me, the maneuver around the keyboard faster than using the rack. But nevertheless, um, the rack and the keyboard sounds exactly the same. Um, it's the same boards, the same components inside. Um, and both are great. If you can get your hand on an Emacs, highly recommended. Um, and it's a lot cheaper than than an SP1200 right now. Those SP1200 are skyrocketing right now into the prices. Um, the cheapest one I've been seeing lately um, is like $6,000. That's a lot of money. If you got it, this is not a lot of money. But if you don't have it, that's a lot of cash um, to spend on the old machine. But the Emacs keyboard, um, they're in the range of $1,200 to up to $2,000 depending on the, uh, the condition of the machine. Um, highly recommend changing your screen uh, from the original one. This has that new screen. Um, so it's fantastic. I can see everything from any angle. Um, but this is what happened with most 80s uh, you know, screens. They are not fantastic. They are not the best. But you know, great that we, we have now the way of changing those screens. Like um, if you have watched my videos, you see I change the screen on my SP1200, which I can see from any angle. I love that screen. Um, so with this, I would say, you know, hope you guys um, have a good day, a good night. It's your main DJ Broxy. Until next time, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up this video. If you haven't subscribed, it's a perfect time, man. Don't wait. Subscribe now. God bless. Until next time.